Grace of God, we thank you right now. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your people, oh God. We ask that you would touch us, oh God. Meet us right here. Give us ears to hear and a heart to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Yeah. Amen and amen. amen. We do praise God again amen. for First Lady Simmons. We praise God for the praise team. Amen. Praise God for the musicians. Amen. Praise God for the men and the women. Amen. The boys and the girls. We praise God for everybody. And we definitely praise God for my aunt coming all the way from Georgia. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We praise God for my big cousin. Amen. amen. From Kansas City. Amen. amen. That's brother. And we just praise God for them being with us on today. Amen. It's an honor and a privilege uh, for them to be here. You know, I tell you, don't take anything for granted. When people take time out, that is very special. And we thank God for it. We're praying for all the sick. Amen. And many sick among us, uh, the many sick, and we're praying that God will heal their bodies, that God will bring them through. We're praying that some will come back and we praise God that God will just touch their minds. Amen. And we're praying for all those online that will watch. Amen. That God will continue to touch them and bless them. Indeed. The Lord is good to us. And he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be magnified. He's worthy to be exalted. I often tell you that nobody can treat you like the Lord can. Amen. Nobody can take care of you like the Lord can. And he woke us up this morning and started us on our way. He gave us a brand new day and a new song. Every time you get a new day, you got a new song. Because the Lord has allowed you to see a brand new day that you've never seen before. So today we're going to the book of Zechariah, the fourth chapter, the fourth through the seventh verse. Zechariah, the fourth chapter, the fourth through the seventh verse. And I'm going to preach the Church of God in Christ theme for this year uh, that we have, that we will soon hear from the bishop in November in Memphis. But I'm going to preach the theme today. The mission is possible. The mission is possible. So we're going to go to Zechariah, the fourth chapter, fourth through the seventh verse. Let's continue to pray for the grief families, yeah. those that have lost their loved ones. Let's continue to hold them up in prayer. Last Saturday, as you know, uh, we put Larry in the mother hall, and my daughter also lost her husband. So we want to keep them up in prayer. Uh, pray. We don't never get used to it, but we ought to pray one for another. Because we know this is what we experience in this life. But God has a remedy for it all. Zechariah, the fourth chapter, fourth through the seventh verse. You have it, say amen. amen. You watch the line, you have your Bibles, your iPads, your phones. Zechariah, the fourth chapter, fourth through the seventh verse. So I answered and spoke to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knoweth thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace, unto it. The thought today is the mission. The word today uh, is the mission is possible. The mission is possible. What is the mission? The mission is the task. The charge that God has given to you. Your assignment in this world. Is is present tense. First person. It's to you. Possible. Being within the limits of ability. Of capacity. The realization through the power of God that you can do it. And the strength of Almighty God. The God of the Bible. We can do it. So saints and friends. Today we honor and glorify God. The God of our salvation. And to his son Jesus and to the Holy Ghost. We admonish you to stay in tune. And be on one accord with the spirit of God. And as a complete body of Christ in the kingdom of God. Amen. The kingdom of God is at hand. And we must stay 
divinely and laser beam focused with one mind to fulfill the will of Almighty God. Having the mind of Christ to be obedient to God's word and commands. Having our total commitment to the God of our salvation, our God, who is holy, righteous, and God is perfect in all his ways. That we should obey him, not sway or turn from the left or to the right, but that we will divinely be in his care, seeking the perfect will and direction for our lives. We have to know that God answers and hears us. God hears our prayers. The other night in Bible study when I was saying, everybody that asks, receive it. You got to have it. We receive it by faith. Many times in the Bible you see that Jesus in his own land couldn't work some miracles because the people didn't have faith. It wasn't in him, it was because the people didn't have the faith. But God is a consuming fire. He's a jealous God, and he wants us to serve him only. He don't want us to serve anything else. And we must be encouraged in the Lord that God is our great and sustainer who has given us all we need for success through his word. And as we study, we read and apply the word to our lives by faith and allowing the word of God to work in us. So then we should be encouraged and encourage each other. We ought to encourage each other. We shouldn't tear each other down. Amen. But we should encourage each other, edify each other. Because uh, many are going through. Uh, some are sick and God is raising up. It's good to see Sister call you back among us. Amen. That the God is yet healing and yet delivering. And we ought to build each other up in our most holy faith. And we ought to be provoking each other to love and to good works. We ought to be strengthened to exhort each other uh, to hold on and to persevere and not turn our backs on the only one that can help us. You ought to hear me say, sometimes you got less of friends go, you got less of people that mean your heart go, but don't let Jesus go. You want to hold on to Jesus. We be encouraged in the Lord and we ought to know whose side we're leaning on. We're leaning on the Lord's side. And whatever we need, we sing the song that God's got it. God's got it. God can fix it. God can create it. God can mend it. God will give you a strategy. If you pray for a strategy, he'll give you the resources because he's a God of all sources. And through the power of God, moving by faith and our total trust in God, we can make it if we trust in him. The Bible tells us that God cannot lie. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Whatever God says he doesn't change. His Bible, the word of God don't change. He's unmutable. He's not a mutant. He does not change. He's God all by himself. And next to him, above him, there he is no other. Psalm 84 and 11 in your Bible says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Good things come when you serve the Lord. The blessing of the Lord, Bible tells us, make it rich and add no sorrow to it. Blessed by the best. Anybody blessed by the best today? Yeah. We're blessed by the best. Yes, yes. The Bible lets us know our God never sleeps. You know, I, I take naps. Some of y'all take naps too. But God never sleeps. He never slumbers. And he doesn't take a nap. The Bible said in Psalm 121 and 4, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. And we serve a God. That's the same all the time. Isaiah 59 and 1 said, The whole of the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save, neither is his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. God can hear us uh, where we are. And our God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Those that go up to God with everything they got, God is a reward of them that diligently seek him. He keeps his word, he keeps his command, and we must have faith in God. But the scriptures informs us that the just shall live by faith. Amen. You got to live by faith. You're only going as far as you believe or trust. You're only going that far. Whether it's your soul, your efforts, your money, your life, your business, your careers, your time, you're only going as far as you believe. You see people who have made it in business because they believe that they went after it with all they have and they became successful. They had faith. You're only going as far as you believe. Faith will add up and will multiply. It will advance you and heal you, deliver you, and save you. So we must be focused on the ministry of Jesus Christ. 
and be intentional in our efforts to build the kingdom of God. Because our God is perfect and intentional. Did you know that? You don't serve an accidental God. You serve an intentional God. Everything God does is on purpose. You may have some accidents. You may have some incidents. But your God is on purpose. He's intentional. Isaiah 55, 11 through 12 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. They shall not return to be void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And they shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Before ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Jeremiah 29, 11 said, For I know the thoughts. I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And the Bible in Proverbs 20, 16 and 3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Do you understand that God's not surprised by anything in your life? God's not surprised by, you know how you call people and they surprise things are happening? God knows it's already going on. Because he's the only one that knows everything. So we must not be distracted from fulfilling our purpose and the plan and the will of God. The Bible says work out thy salvation with fear and trembling because your destiny is your pathway. Being ever thankful and appreciative to God, owing God honor, praise, and worship. How, how many of us know that we owe God something? Amen. You don't even have to think about it. You know you owe God. And you can never pay God back. But you can worship him, you can serve him. Yeah. By continually, Bible said, by continually presenting your bodies holy, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. And then the Bible said, being transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? You renew your mind in the Word of God by reading the Word of God and conforming your lifestyle to the holiness and the example of the Word today. For it is a privilege and an honor to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Y'all think that's a privilege? To serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? To work at God's good pleasure? For it is Him that works the will and the doing of His good pleasure in all of us. So we ought to be serving Him. Philippians 2 and 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both the will and to do of His good pleasure. Paul said it like this in 1 Timothy 1 and 12. And I thank Christ. Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Because God has entrusted us with so much, so many wonderful things, even when God gives us children, God's entrusted you with your children to raise them up, to provide for them, to make a way for them. Whom much is given, much is required. And God has called all of us. All of us got a call on life. You may not be a pastor. You may not be a preacher. You may not be a urshur, but all of us got a calling on our life. All of us got gifts and talents and talents to be used for the glory of God. So it's high time for us to build the kingdom of God. I'm about building the kingdom of God like never before. Knowing that we're doing kingdom work. We're doing judgment work. Knowing that God knows our heart. Did anybody know that? God knows our heart. He knows our minds. He knows the intents of our heart before we even do it. God already knows what we wanted to do before we even did it. Jesus is touched by our infirmities. The Bible lets us know. He knows we got some weaknesses. He knows we got to go through some things. And he's touched by it. And he knows the pain and the heartache that sometimes we got to go through. You don't have to raise your hand because everybody's been through heartache at some point in life. Uh, but Jesus knows about the heartache. He knows about the sorrow. He knows when you've been mistreated. He knows when you've been misunderstood. He knows when you're going through difficult challenges in your life. And unfortunate circumstances, sometimes we must face. But we must be as Nehemiah was when he was working in the Bible. He was doing a great work for the Lord. And when they tried to get him to come down, he said, I can't come back. I'm doing a great work. I don't care what the negative naysayers say. You know, you always got some negative people around you, right? Amen. You always got somebody trying to pull you down from doing good, pull you down from where you're trying to climb to. But in other words, Nehemiah said, I don't care about that. I got a job to do. The naysayers, the doubters won't make me come down. The complainers won't make me come down. You know, I always say, we sing that song, I, I, I won't complain 
But all of us can play. Yeah. It's too hot, it's too cold. It's too tall, it's too short. It's too light, it's too dark. Mm -hmm. But we, we shouldn't be complainers. We shouldn't be doubters and complainers. But we must ascend to high heights and deeper depths in God. We're pressing on the upper way. New heights we should be gaining every day. We must make sure that our heart is pure toward God. Just keeping yourself out of the way. You know the biggest thing is you got to keep yourself out of the way, right? Amen. Self get in the way. I often tell people when you start pointing the finger at other people, there's four fingers pointing back at you. <laughs> there's three or four pointing at you. Because really, can't nobody make you do what you don't want to do. Amen. You do what you want to do. Yeah. So you got to get self out of the way. A lot of times people can't get what they need to get because they, their self is in the way. They can't get their ego out of the way. They can't get things out of the way to promote the program of God. But we got to stay humble. We got to stay meek and lowly unto God. Stay down at the feet of Jesus. Don't wreck yourself, but check yourself through fasting and praying, serving the Lord, and asking God every day to help to enlighten you through His Spirit. We must always be committed to giving God all for the things he's done, doing, and going to do. God is always doing something in your life. Whether you realize it or not, God is always acting in your life. He's always making a way for you. Psalm 29, first through the second verse says, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. First Corinthians 10 and 31. Wherefore, therefore, you eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. In other words, the Bible tells you everything you do. When you get together and eat, give, give God the glory. Uh, when God gives you something to drink, you got everything you want. Most people got two or three refrigerators and five freezers full of food, everything you want. Give God the glory. Because God made a way for you that you extended, that you got what you need and God provided for you. God made a way for you. He opened the door for you. And we must understand that no flesh so glory in God's sight. If we humble ourselves, God will raise us up. But if we raise ourselves up, God says, I'm going to bring you right down. He says, I raise up one and I take down another. So it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, that stands in the need of prayer. Uh, so if you get prayer for yourself, you can help your brothers and sisters. Amen. You can help somebody else. Your neighbor, who is your neighbor? Everybody that's around you. Every human being is your neighbor. And I want to be a stepping stone. Anybody want to be a stepping stone, a building block that you help somebody else and not a stumbling block? You don't want to be a stumbling block call people to stumble. You want to be somebody that helps somebody else. We ought to be committed to pleasing God through repentance and salvation. Righteousness, faith. Praising God through the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will reside in us and empower us to overcome our own flesh and our flesh ways, our own sinful ways. And Satan and the word system of evil. Pleasing God. Anybody want to please God? In your conduct, in your conversation, in your lifestyle. As I often tell people, people say, well, God loves everybody. Yeah, he loves everybody, but he's not pleased with them. The Bible said you have to be pleasing in God's sight. You have to be pleasing in your conduct, your conversation, and your lifestyle. In your words, your action and deeds. Living out this love letter. Did you know the word is a love letter to you? Because God loves you with an everlasting love. The Bible tells you that he loves you with an eternal love that has no beginning and no end. It's just like him. God has no beginning. He has no end. So his love is the same way. And he demonstrated his love through Jesus Christ. So in other words, anybody want to live in favor? Because we accepted the finished work of Jesus Christ. When you belong to the Lord, you're living in faith. You're living in faith already. You're going forward in the Lord and not back. Anybody know you can't go backwards? You can't go fix nothing you did 50 years ago. You can repent. You can ask somebody sorry, but you can't fix it. It's already in the past. You can't do nothing about it. You can go forward, but you cannot go backwards. We can't get yesterday back. There are a lot of people trying to get yesterday back, yesteryear back. You can't get it back. We must drive and go forward. 
Amen. And you got to go forward in the Lord because our God will not fail us. He will not forsake us. And Jesus Christ will be with us to the uttermost end of the world. And in the book today, we should be committed to God on sharing his word. Being unified on one accord. When we sing, we praise God. We clap our hands together. We unify. We ought to be unified in the body of Christ. You know, the Bible tells us that two are better than one, right? Because if one falls down, the other one can help the other one up. It's better to be unified. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. We're better together. When we learn how to work together, we can expect victory every time. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Because we have the victor on our side. And that's Jesus the cross. And the overcomer dwelling on the inside of us. We got to know that the favor of God is resting upon you. When you live right, the favor of God is already upon you. And you must be careful you don't lose the favor of God and the blessing of God when it's upon you. We got to be blessed because we obey God's word and we obey his command and God blesses us. Because the Bible says, even when you look at the book of Exodus, God said, if you obey my voice in me, you'll be a peculiar treasure unto me. That means you'll be special unto me because you obey me. And we are experiencing unusual and unexpected blessings of the Lord. Proverbs 16 and 7 says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies be at peace with him. We got to have a personal relationship with the Almighty God. You ought to hear me say, We got to always pray. We got to pray without ceasing. We got to know what the Word says. We got to continue to read the Word. And we got to know that prayer works. Prayer will settle you, prayer will fix you. Prayer will fix the situation or it'll fix you for the situation. But we ought to always pray because prayer is not a gift. The Bible commands everybody to pray. Everybody must pray. We got to pray the will of God. We're fasting and grow spiritually. And we got to wean ourselves from the ways of the Lord. Anybody have any children? You have to wean them from something? You got to wean yourself from the ways and the custom of the world. Keeping the flesh under subjection. The fleshly desires and uncontrolled appetites that are developed in the world. We're working in the kingdom, right? It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about God. It's about Jesus. So we got to keep our eyes on the Lord. You got to follow your pastor as he follows Christ. You, you follow your leader. Paul wrote in the Bible, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. When your pastor takes his eyes off Jesus, then you need to follow somebody else. You need to follow them that are following Christ. Doing the will of God in the earth while the earth remains. That someone might see Jesus in all of our lives. That our lives will be what? Mirror images that reflect the image of Christ. We are the salt of the earth. Did you know that? We are supposed to be the lights of the world. We're not supposed to be, uh, we're supposed to be lights in darkness. Somebody ought to see the light in you and all the things going on in this world. All the things you see on the internet, on the news, the saints, the people that say they know God ought to be different. They ought to see something different in you. We ought to be ambassadors for Christ and more than conquerors in a world of sin and shame. Being peacemakers. Hebrews 12 and 4 said, Follow peace with all men and with holiness, without holiness of no man, see the Lord. Let your light shine so that before men that, that they can see your good works. That they may see God, that God will be glorified in heaven by the good things you do. Jesus said, There's nobody good but God. If there's any good, all of us, God made it happen. We got to love everybody. It's not just a, a buzzword, but we got to love everybody. We got to love God, love yourself, love your family, love your friends, and the Bible even says love your enemy through the power of God. The Bible says you have to ride with your enemy, but you got to love him. You don't ride with nobody trying to kill you, but you can love him from afar. <laughs> Growing in the grace and knowledge of our Almighty God. Ephesians 3, 17 and 18, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height. Did you all know we need to go higher? We need to go deeper? We ought to be getting better? You know, somebody said, I'm getting better with age. You ought to get better with age. I'm getting better. I've been around a while. I'm going to new dimensions in God. You the longer you be with the Lord, you ought to get better and better. You ought to go deeper and deeper as God moves us and shifts us into what we need to be. It's with loving kindness that God has drawn us. Is that what I said? Amen. So you ought to show love to somebody. Amen. And with love, we draw others to Christ. 
There, there's a, a Muslim bishop. He, he passed away. He, I mean, he's a church god in Christ bishop. He's a bishop, but anyway, he died when he said he was a Muslim, but he said he was drawn over because the saints showed love for him. You got to show love one for another. You can't, you know, you, you got to show love. Nobody want to be a part if you don't show love, but you show love. Don't let anything come between you and your God. Did you know that? Don't let anything come between you and God. Don't let anything poison your heart, darken your attitude, change your demeanor, and become contrary to who God wants you to be. You got to be yourself. You know, the greatest thing is when people say, you yourself, you're the best you can be when you be yourself. You can't be nobody else. And many times, we become jaded. We become hurt. We become tired in ministry. And sometimes we're frustrated. Sometimes we feel alienated and disgusted and discouraged. Sometimes we become careless and distracted, undiscerned and complacent. Because what? A lot of us have been through the pandemic, right? Amen. Some didn't come, some haven't came back yet. But we've been through something. We've been through the pandemic. We've been through sickness. We've been through pain. We've been through tornadoes and tsunamis in our life. But I come to tell you the power of God, the Holy Ghost, that we have to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. We can't give up. We can't quit. We don't give in and we don't give out. Because the Bible says not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So in the Bible today, when you look at Zechariah, with the Zechariah today, in the message today, we find the priest, the prophet Zechariah, encouraging the people of God, the children of Israel, to continue to do what? To continue to build the second temple of God. The mission is possible, friends of mine. We can do it through the help of God. Zechariah is the son of the prophet Edu. God gave him a vision and revelation along with a prophecy to get the people who have been in exile for 70 years. They've been in captivity for 70 years. God let them go in captivity because of sin and idolatry and disobedience because of what they were doing. But did anybody know that we need to get going again? We got to get going again. Sometimes when they, when they were in captivity for 70 years, they do like some of us. We, they got lazy. They got complacent. They got tired. They got angry. They stopped taking the time out or they just quit. And the Lord was not pleased with them. When you read the Bible, God was not pleased with them. He talks to them. He said, the Lord was not pleased with your forefathers before him because the earlier prophets had cried to them to change their evil ways and their evil doings. But they wouldn't hear nor listen to the pleas of them. God asked, where are your forefathers? When you read the book of Zechariah, God says, where are your forefathers at? The ones that were for you. Where are the prophets of old? He said, all of them have died and passed away. But I'm still God. I'm still here in other words. God said, they're gone. But my word is still standing. The statutes and commandments remain the same. God said, that never changed. The disobedience has caused judgment and propelled the prophets of old to enter into eternal rest. But God allows an angel in a vision, when you read the Bible, again to talk to Zechariah. He sees a man riding on a red horse among the myrtle trees, those small, colorful, blossoming trees y'all see. The myrtle tree represents the sign of kingdom blessing for Israel. The myrtle tree, the evergreen, encourages us to slow down and connect with a harmonious lifestyle cycle, death and rebirth and life. It causes us to transform sadness and grief into love and hope. So the Lord said he sent the angel to walk through the earth for an example to the prophet to literally explain to the prophet everything was sitting still. And other God said everything sitting still in this earth instead of moving. Nothing was being done according to the word of God. The temple wasn't being built because the temple would tower over the myrtle trees. But the tree was has more distinction in the vision. God says there's nothing going on of what I told you to do. In other words, how long will I be merciful to you? I'm giving you a chance to be obedient to my word and what I told you to do. God was displeased with the action that was taking place. And how long will he keep you in comfort and prosperity? God shows him another vision of the land, the city being measured, that the Lord had 
build a wall of safety. God said, I'm building a wall of safety for you. God served judgment upon the nation that attacked Jerusalem, the apple of his eye. God said he was shaking his hand upon the nation that had ruined them for them to be ruined. God showed him a different Joshua, the high priest before the angel of the Lord, standing on the right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke you, O Satan. Even the Lord has chosen Jerusalem. Rebuke thee. God even changed Joshua's filthy garments and removed the iniquity from them to change his clothes. Amen. God tells Joshua the high priest, if he walks in his way, God always gives us that. He's a merciful God. He said, if you walk in my way, if you change your attitude, if you change what you think about me, he said, he's going to keep his charge. God's going to keep his commandments. You shall judge the Lord's house. God said, I will remove the iniquity in one day because I had my hand on you. So sometimes we can get beat down so long and be kept in captivity so long that we become idle. We don't we lose the fight in us. We lose the activity in us. We get a bad mindset. But we must have the mind of Christ. Sometimes we become stagnant in the completion of our assignment. We don't finish it. You know, when your kids, you know, you say you did a half job, baby. You need to do better. You need to go back and fix that, Billy. You need to get that straight now. We got to get it. We got to get this sign of God. And that's what they did when we built the temple. So the mission was possible through the help of God. And God just wanted them to get active in doing it. God has a word for us today. Jesus shows compassion for us, empathy and sympathy for us. He intercedes on behalf of us. He does it. Multiple chances we get. You know they sing the song, God gave me another chance, he gave me a second chance, but God gives us so many chances, we get a thousand million chances. He intercedes for us. They needed to be encouraged to get up and get going. Y'all never had to encourage somebody to get up and get going? Y'all never had to encourage your children to get up and get going? They had to get up and get going. God said they had to finish the task. They had to complete the building of what God wanted them to do in the temple. Come out of the captivity mind. They were in the captivity mind. They were in a doubting mind. They were in a complacent mind. They were in a negative mind. They were in a complaining mind. But believe God and finish the work. So it's the merciful. Our merciful God gives them another chance. God lets them write them off after two or three mistakes. But the prophet lets them know the Lord was with them. And we'll see them through. Anybody believe the Lord is with you today? And the Lord is going to see you through. The Lord was going to oversee them. The Lord is full of mercy and the protector. And aren't you glad that the Lord is a shield and a buckler for you today? That he will carry you through? God was going to accomplish the work through the leaders. As I get out of here this morning, Joshua the priest and Zerubbabel the governor. Good to follow this leadership, isn't it? It's good to follow good leadership. Good God works through leadership as a God of order. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. No, it isn't by permission. It isn't by probability. It's not by consent. It's not according to your ability or your capacity or your right or your legal authority. But God said, except for the fact of my divine breath that I'm breathing through you, the wind of God, the divine nature of God is moving through the earth. And anybody know if God be for you, be born in the world against you? Yeah. Oh, who can stand against God? God is greater than anything in this world. The Bible lets us know that if the whole world comes against him, he's greater. You and God make a majority. As long as you got God on your side, you can't make it. We don't want to be turned over into the hands of the enemy. We don't want to be turned over for disobedience. But we want to extend the higher heights and people that's in God. The Lord
We pray that somebody was saved today. Pray that somebody will be saved in the future. We pray, God, that you would heal today. Even while I was ministering the word, somebody was healed today. And we thank you for it. God, we ask you to touch that ankle, touch that back condition, touch that eye condition today. God, touch that sciatic nerve today. In the name of Jesus, give deliverance of God to that calf muscle. In the name of Jesus, heal that cancer drying up from the root. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you right now for your healing power. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, God, that it's already done. Thank you for you love us so much that you sent your son. You sent the word for us today. And we thank you for it. Continue to touch our minds, touch our heart, touch our will. God bless us as we travel over the highways and byways and airways, wherever we may go. Bless us, O God. Bless us in our home. Don't let us be destroyed by fire. But please bring it in. It ain't hurt all the pain. In the name of Jesus, bring the backslider back home. Bring the prodigal son and daughter back home. Bring that child that alienated himself from that parent back home today. In the name of Jesus, dry up that drug condition. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. I should be God, God, we thank you that you're doing it right now. And we believe by faith and it's already done. Thank you where you brought us from. The way you're taking us to. Touch us one by one, name by name. God, you know every hair follows on our head. You know every hair on our head. You know how to bless us. You know what to do for us. Encourage and discourage today. Somebody was heavy loaded when they came in today. But God removed the heavy weight. In the name of Jesus. We cried up from the group. And we declared victory. In the name of Jesus. We have already prayed. Thank God. Ain't like the end to give God praise that is 